this event has been organized through the EPSRC uh, Network Plus, Hydrogen Network for Transportation, and is part of an ongoing series which we're doing in, on different aspects of hydrogen research uh, around the transport sector. And uh, please keep your eyes out for, for many more. It's kind of happening about one every month. And, and hopefully when lockdown comes to an end, we'll be having many more face-to-face -face activities. This week, we're gonna look at the challenges around compact onboard storage for transport. And we've got two speakers who will provide their own thoughts. We will record these talks as well. If you look on the Net Zero Research website, which we've recorded and uploaded all other talks that have been in the webinars as well. So uh, please feel free to go back and look at, at some of the other talks that have been going on. And of course, if you miss this event or future events, you'll find them all on there. So I should say thanks for listening. And uh, we do to continue these events going forward in 2021. And please, if you have any feedback for us, let us know. The key thing is really to get access to these events, please sign up on our website. We can then send you information about when the next one's coming up. Now, moving on to the, the speakers. The first speaker is Assistant Professor Dr. Julian uh, Yepsen, and he's head of department of the Helmholtz Zentrum Center for Materials and Coastal Research in Gierstracht, Germany. His, his topic is compact and safe hydrogen storage in metal hydrides, but this will give us a slightly different perspective on the different ways you can store hydrogen on board a vehicle. Now, this is the opportunity now for, for Julian to, to bring up his slides on the screen and, and we, can, we can start listening. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, yeah, my name is Julian Jepsen. I'm from Germany. I'm working uh, nearby and in Hamburg. So uh, at the, I have actually two places to work. One is the Hamburg Center Biestacht, a research center in front of Germany, uh, sorry, in front of Hamburg, uh, which is uh, mainly focusing on materials research. And the other one is the Helmut Schmidt University inside of Hamburg. Uh, in both, uh, I'm uh, in charge for materials uh, uh, in, in general, and we are focusing a lot on materials, functionalized materials in particular for hydrogen storage. So this is also what my talk today will be about, uh, compact and safe hydrogen storage and metal hydrides. And I would like to introduce to you the principal idea about uh, metal hydrides, what is more or less the state of the art and what is possible, what are the advantages. You are all aware that uh, the renewables are necessary and at the end of my talk uh, you allow me to also give one further comment to this but uh, let's start in the beginning that renewables needs hydrogen to have a really close cycle from the hydrogen production to the storage and the combustion back to the production so this is possible so far only with hydrogen um, Usually, uh, our, uh, to, to the best of our knowledge, we believe that hydrogen will be a major player in our future energy life cycle. There might be also others, but it makes sense to consider hydrogen in a deeper way. What we are focusing is hydrogen storage. And just let me uh, briefly uh, advertise uh, um, also my colleagues uh, at Helmut uh, Centrum Giesthoff who are also expert in hydrogen production, uh, which is not uh, the topic of my today's talk, but uh, they are focusing on the direct splitting of water by, by the sun, uh, which is also a very interesting, but also challenging way of hydrogen production. Okay, today's talk is about storage. And if you look at storage, there is a nice way of uh, showing the, the main advantage and disadvantage of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a gas uh, uh, under normal pressure, as you see on the left side. I can also use the laser pointer. So as you can see it here, uh, of course, is a very light uh, uh, gas. However, there are some forces uh, and these forces oops, uh, do not allow the molecules to interact or, or to come to a certain distance. So there are intermolecular repulsive forces, and these forces are present uh, also if you increase the pressure. 
you have to increase the pressure significantly up to 700 bars to have them, let's say, at least in a meaningful distance. But even if you uh, um, low down the temperature to 20 Kelvin, which is unbelievable low, of course, um, even then in the so-called liquid state, you still have these forces. So this is, of course, also in comparison to how hydrogen is stored uh, in the conventional way by uh, gas storage or liquid hydrogen storage. But the main problem, the intermolecular reproduce forces remains. Our uh, approach and it's not our approach only, there are many people uh, in the world that work on this topic, is to store hydrogen in a metal lattice. Uh, the advantage is uh, very obvious. It's, um, it's a chemical reaction. So we are not storing molecules, we are storing atom by atom. And uh, these atoms are not facing these intermolecular repulsive forces. So what we can do uh, within the metal lattice we can uh, arrange the atoms, hydrogen atoms, in a much, much denser way. There are, there are other advantages. Uh, the most obvious why this technique is used is the high volumetric density, but this all takes place at much lower pressures. So the list of metal, uh, metals that form a metal hydrides is quite huge already. Uh, but more than only metals, as you will see in a minute when I talk about the materials in general, we also considered complex uh, uh, as, uh, uh, as host for the hydrogen. And so um, it's a huge number of materials, material combination in general. Um, so they have all different uh, pressure levels. But let's say in general, the pressure level is much lower if you compare it, for instance, to the 700 bar technique. So pressures of uh, way below 100 bar, typical even below 50 bar of hydrogen pressure are significant to store the hydrogen. The temperatures also, as you, we've seen in a minute, depends highly on the material. But if we compare it at least to the liquid hydrogen uh, storage, then the temperature is also much more moderate and technique from a technical approach, much better and easier to handle. So it's uh, important to say, because I haven't had a slide about that, that this is a chemical reaction. And this chemical reaction is uh, a reaction that is, uh, um, that is a needed energy. So uh, the reaction enthalpy uh, is uh, necessary for the absorption, uh, for the, uh, sorry, for the, for the desorption. And energy is released in the form of heat uh, during the absorption. This is important to be mentioned, but I will come to this in a second. So there are different materials and uh, the well-known materials uh, can be grouped into uh, by different temperatures levels and uh, room temperature hydrides are known for many, many years. Um, here's just one example of London nickel five. Um, what uh, they providing is hydrogen storage. Uh, so absorption um, uh, and desorption at very moderate temperature as you can see from the name already. But the disadvantage is that uh, the amount of hydrogen that you can store is in relation to the overall weight quite low. So just 1.4 weight percent of hydrogen can be stored inside. So an easy calculation, if you have a 100 kilogram storage, only 1.4 kilogram of hydrogen can be stored inside. This is obviously uh, not so so good, and this is of course also the biggest disadvantage, the gerbermetric capacity, but you can actually increase the hydrogen capacity, but then at the same time, you have to increase also the binding energy uh, shown here as a reaction enthalpy, and thus also the temperature of operation is increasing. So this is possible for the so-called uh, middle temperature hydrides, like for instance, sodium alanate, where you can uh, increase the hydrogen capacity already uh, drastically. And still the operation is possible uh, within a temperature range of let's say 100 to 200 degrees C. But you can even go one step further and increase uh, the uh, mining energy of the host of the metal to the hydride. The easiest way of, to think about is magnesium hydride. Magnesium hydride has a reaction enthalpy of 76 kilojoule per mole of hydrogen. This makes it, by the way, also interesting already for other applications like heat storage. But this is not my topic of today. Today we're talking about hydrogen storage and the amount of hydrogen that can be stored is again uh, increased. But 
it's this is not the end. Actually, you can uh, reach capacities, reversible capacities. I have to mention this, uh, even uh, above uh, thirty or even above ten weight percent. Let's say it like this. This is almost the limit. So ten weight percent is quite a lot. And just to give you an example of what is going on in the research field, um, we discover, like two other groups in the world as well, that even these metal hydrides can be combinated. And we took, for instance, these two candidates, magnesium hydride and lithium borohydride, and we combined them and we let them react together. And what was very interesting to find out during the reaction of hydride one and hydride two here, for instance, magnesium hydride and lithium borohydride, we have a new phase that is forming. Uh, in our example, it's magnesium borate. And the formation of magnesium borate is from the thermo thermodynamic point of view uh, in the other direction than the uh, overall reaction. So that means the reaction enthalpy is reduced. Um, to show you this more in some significant numbers, so for the combination of lithium borohydrides with magnesium hydride, um, this is the reaction that occurs. It actually occurs in a two-step reaction, but this is the overall reaction. We lower the reaction enthalpy if you compare it to the uh, pure uh, materials, the pure um, uh, hydrides. We lower the uh, enthalpy significant, but the um, capacity remains on a very high level. So this means by this lower reaction enthalpy, we can also lower the temperature of operation. Okay, this is uh, this is just should give you a hint about what is going on in the materials point of view. But now comes the question: This does not help you because uh, you have to bring it also in a vessel. We have to design a tank, and we have a lot of activities in this field. And actually, my department is uh, facing or is uh, focusing in particular on this topic to design tank system for metal hydrides. And what is usually being taken, sorry for this uh, not updated data, but are the DOE targets, but you can also look for other targets. Uh, whatever target you choose, it is always the same. We are always looking for um, some, some targets here in this level, if we plot the volumetric energy storage against the gravimetric energy storage. So we always want to be here in the upper right corner. So how, does, how do metal hydrides uh, uh, behave here? So if we just take a look to the material, the room temperature hydrides, of course, are facing this quite bad gravimetric storage density. But this is, as I mentioned already, this is improved if you go to room temperature, uh, middle temperature or even high temperature hydrides. And the combination of uh, lithium borohydride, magnesium hydride, it's uh, very important because it is already in this area of, uh, of interest. However, this is just from the material point of view. So what you still have to consider is uh, a surrounding uh, tank system. And for all these hydrides and many others, we developed a tank system in the past. Uh, so for room temperature hydride, middle temperature hydride, but uh, to some extent it was unknown how a high temperature hydride would look like if you put it in a vessel. Um, I will speak a little bit more about that in a second. Just, of course, always what is important, what we are aiming at. We're aiming at uh, different, or our scope or approach of work is uh, usually that we have a look to the economic point of view. I'm an industrial engineer, uh, to say so. So I'm a lot interesting also in economic aspects. Of course, we are interesting in the storage material, the processing, the properties, compaction plays a role. And furthermore, as I mentioned already, the material itself doesn't help us. We have to scale it up so that we have a total system, a storage system uh, afterwards as well. And all this is usually supported, or in particular, um, the storage system development is uh, usually supported by finite element simulation. All of this aiming at uh, uh, optimum design with low cost, fast kinetics, and low volume, but also low weight. So just give you uh, a few examples uh, in just only in the field of economics and only in the field of the storage material. I chose here two examples of what is going on in, in research. So we ask ourselves, what would be the total cost for one refueling process of a mobile application? We keep it uh, flexible here. We say mobile application because uh, one variable was the, the size of the storage. And so you can just between, let's say, a car application with five to six kilograms of hydrogen 
and uh, truck application with, of course, higher amount of hydrogen stored. If we, uh, in our, uh, in our, in this was just a rough estimation, but in our estimation, we, uh, we compare the pressure storage system, the liquid hydrogen storage system, and the lithium hydride, magnesium hydride, as well as the sodium LNA storage system. And here's the result for uh, four kilograms uh, uh, of hydrogen. So typically a, a car, a small car application. And what we see here is um, we have assumed the same hydrogen cost for all of them. Um, if for those of you who are familiar with the hydrogen cost discussion, what we are aiming at the moment is less than $4 per kilogram for really green hydrogen. So produced hydrogen by renewables. Um, here in my estimation, since it was it's some years ago, I uh, estimated a slightly higher price, but that is not the thing we are comparing here, even though it's uh, in particular because it's equal for all of them. What we take a look in particular is uh, what is above the blue bar. And above the blue bar, we find the cost uh, contribution for the hydrogen processing, the tank system, and for the uh, solid state hydrogen storage system, of course, the storage material cost. And this should give you an impression. And there are just a few statements I would like to uh, draw from this. So their greatest cost advantage uh, comes from in particular systems based on sodium alanate. And the lowest, of course, but this was to a certain extent also expected for liquid hydrogen storage system. The total cost for the pressure storage, if you take a look here on the left side, is almost equal to our usual uh, um, cost at the fueling station. However, of course, taking into account that tax were not considered here. Um, the low processing and tank system cost uh, for uh, complex hydrides are uh, uh, one of the key issue what makes solid state hydrogen storage cheaper than the conventional storage system. Moreover, which is not shown here, but there is a further cost reduction possible under mass production aspects. Of course, our data were not so much available for mass production because uh, with some example, uh, some examples, for instance, for submarines, there are not really a mass production of metal hydride storage system in a considerable range. However, we assume that the cost in particular for the tank system can be reduced at least by 50% if not uh, lower to one third of the cost that we estimated here. So further potential is definitely given. And finally, oh, okay, I think I mentioned this already. Let me jump to um, a more technical aspect, the storage material. The storage material has to be processed somehow. And uh, there are many, many different materials. They all need, need usually different treatments. But one of the treatment, and this is true for lithium boron magnesium hydride as well, is a processing called high energy ball milling, uh, which is a technique where we took the, um, the raw materials, add some additive, which has a catalytic effect, put it in a, in a wire with some milling balls. And then what we just do, we uh, simply move uh, the wire so that there is always a conclusion between uh, uh, the, the balls inside the milling wire and the wall, for instance. And what happens uh, during this process um, is uh, what is shown here. So we are lowering um, the particle size. And uh, more than that, uh, we're not only lowering the particle size, so it's a lot of science going on here. Also, something happens inside the particle. So what we do is, due to this small milling, we also reduce the crystalline size. So inside the particles or inside the agglomerates, we reduce uh, further the, the, crystal, the phases, uh, the, the boundaries between the phases called crystalline size. And so why is this so important? This is hopefully I'm able to show you uh, yeah, with, with this video, because this enables the hydrogen to diffuse much faster into the material, which is important for the reaction. And you can consider the boundaries as a kind of highways. So the more boundaries we have, uh, the, the more uh, highways and the better, the, the faster in particular, the distribution of the hydrogen. So there's a lot of material science going on, also engineering. And uh, we also can prove this. So if we plot, for instance, the, the estimated particle size um, against the absorption time, so how fast the reaction occurs, we see that there is a correlation between 
these two. And if we do the same for the particle size, uh, sorry, for the crystalline size, we also see that there's a trend uh, towards a lower absorption time, so faster reaction with lower uh, crystalline sizes here uh, for magnesium boride. What we took here is uh, on the left, a measurement by BET, where we measure the specific surface, and on the right uh, by XRD, where we measured the estimated crystalline size. Okay, this brings me to the end of my talk. I hope I manage within the time frame. And let me just conclude my talk briefly. Um, so for metal hydrates can uh, be very potential candidate for different application. Um, they provide, of course, low cost, fast kinetics and particular low volume. Low weight still is challenging, but depending on the, the application, the weight doesn't matter that much. Uh, I can show you hopefully that from the economic point of view, uh, this is mainly due to the very simple structures. We do not have very low temperatures. We do not have very high pressures. So usually um, the tank hull is uh, made by uh, standard steel, which is resistant to hydrogen, of course. Um, we have much more moderate temperatures and pressure condition. And in particular, the pressure condition leads us to also safer hydrogen storage which I haven't tackled so much in my talk, but I was maybe assuming in the second talk we'll more talk about safety in this concern. And safety is usually also coupled with the hydrogen pressure. And since the pressure is much lower, this is also a way of having a, a very safe hydrogen storage. If there is processing necessary at all, we, I can show you, I showed you here an example where very low energy is uh, needed for this processing. Here we're talking about 20 to 30 kilojoule per gram. Uh, this is not much if you consider that high energy ball milling is a very effective measurement. And as, as I also show you, there's a decrease. So what takes place, uh, um, there is a decreasing particle size and crystalline size due to the milling and thus uh, reducing the diffusion barriers. Okay, let me end my talk with uh, this uh, question of where do we manage to bring the hydrogen storage system based on lithium boride and magnesium hydride? And uh, this is the area where we uh, um, assume it is possible to, to, to be reached. Um, this is still above uh, the, the gas hydrogen storage, the liquid hydrogen storage, and even the combination, the cryocompressed hydrogen storage. So from the volumetric point of view, um, it is definitely a competitive technology. From the gravimetric point of view, it is challenging. And uh, it might be also that this bubble needs to be corrected slightly to a lower region. However, uh, it has an advantages in this particular the volumetric energy storage. Okay, finally, um, the discussion about um, hydrogen stored in gas or liquid or metal hydrides uh, usually or sometimes stops because Still, there are people around thinking uh, that uh, hydrogen is not necessary in the future. Renewables are not necessary. I think we are much, much further than we've been some years ago. However, uh, I would like to end my talk with uh, my usual slides. Uh, and there I usually show the hydrogen production over the years. And the most important take home message is that the Stone Age didn't end because we run, they run out of stones. And this is my last message. And uh, uh, with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Julian. Uh, we send you a virtual clap. <laughs>